JFT just fair and direct. Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to JOD Traders Espresso with me, Dr. Slonchowskis. Today's the 3rd of February 2022, so you're yeah, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Thursday's um, recorded session uh, where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. But before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So, um, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, I'll give you a few seconds to read the rest, and we can continue. Okay, so now then, also just before we jump in into the charts, as always, quick mentioning of our JFD YouTube channel, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos, and of course, our JFD Bank website, and specifically our JFD Research page, which is also updated on a daily basis. So you have to check us out here on jfdbank.com and click on the Research tab right there on the top. So. Now the guys jumping into the chart. So the first one I want to pick up here is Nikkei 225. Um, and uh, yeah, we saw a bit of a decline. So uh, everything's kind of in line here. I mean, with the idea that I talked about, the technical idea um, that I said that if the index travels higher but finds resistance somewhere near that 21-day uh, EMA or this downside line, then yes, maybe a bit of a, a decline again could be possible. And in a way, everything kind of played out interestingly because um, yesterday, of course, the as you know, the... Um, the U.S. equity markets closed in positive territory. However, after hours, when uh, Facebook delivered its earnings and then when the stock plunged around 20%, something like that, and uh, yeah, we saw Nasdaq declining heavily. Um, and then, of course, uh, other indices, uh, the other uh, top U.S. indices followed suit after our in after our trading. Um, so yeah, guys, I mean, uh, we had, like I said, we had this. I will get to the U.S. ones in a bit, but um, this is most likely a little reaction here that we had, um, yeah, to the uh, to the whole kind of decline in the uh, in in the index in the U.S. indices after hours. So so yeah, um, let, of course, it, the significant the decline here was not significant, which is quite understandable because uh, it's not really kind of a, a moment for panic or anything. But of course, investors became a little bit more on the cautious side. Well, again, uh, everything this cautiousness kind of playing is playing out nicely uh, in relation to these levels that I mentioned to the uh, this downside line to this 21 day EMA. So, so yeah, uh, for now, I'm keeping an eye on this and to be honest, it's working out. So um, what I said before is that if we get a hold up somewhere around here, another decline could be possible, maybe towards this 26,955 territories right here. Slightly above that, of course, we do have that um, psychological 27,000 mark, which uh, will be carefully monitored by us. But um, yeah, also, like I said, just in case, this is the area I'm keeping an eye on as well. For the upside, basically, it's a straightforward approach here. I need to see a, a break of this downside line, and then, yep, we could go for some higher levels. The German index, DAX, and uh, yeah. Yesterday during the trading hours, it did push higher initially, but um, failed to remain above this area. It did push above this 15,728 zone. If you remember yesterday in my morning video, I talked about that level and said that in order for me to go for higher, I need to push above that area. And boom, there we go. Exactly what I meant here. Um, because the break of this downside line, yes, that worked out 
nicely in the short run, but if you were, if we were looking for some maybe you know further acceleration to the upside here, then well, I need we needed to see a break above this area, and we didn't really uh, well we didn't we got the breakout, but we didn't really get the index closing above that. So that yeah that kind of puts us back to square one a little bit here. Um, and uh, if we take a look at the cash index, we'll see that the price is trading at around fifteen thousand five hundred and fifty mark right now. So that means well we are it seems that we are back below this downside line or actually downside line or actually just kind of maybe slightly yeah just slightly below it so this of course raises a few concerns and um that's where i'm going to keep an eye on this level that i talked about this 15,537 mark uh marked by the low of the 1st of february and uh yeah if we drop below that then this would of course first of all create a new low for february um and then yeah we could go maybe for a bit of a a, a corrective uh, well not a corrective move but a move lower because uh we also have uh this steep uh, tentative upside support line right here which could play out but we'll get to that point if we do actually see that drop below that 15,537 zone now Dow Jones industrial average and uh, of course uh, let me just um, quickly um, if I can just um, go um, right I think okay um, I think it will have to be this way let me just quickly double check this so yeah there we go this is what I wanted to access um, so where the screener I just want to stock heat map there we go this is a good tool here on trading view um, now um, looking at this uh, looking at this picture you can see here um, and uh, yeah yesterday um, where's that Facebook where's that Facebook um, it's okay um kind of missing facebook oh there we go there we go facebook here technology and service so yeah it gained during market hours however the stock plunged and uh yeah i mean uh, other stocks i mean other others followed suit a little bit here I man not but again we'll see in today's trading how everything develops but yeah i mean this is something for you to keep in mind today uh we might get a nice lower um lower opening um and uh here in dow jones for example although and the FN, uh, the the method platforms are traded on the Nasdaq, but again, you know, um, let's see how, like I said, how this is going to play out on on the Dow Jones and this and P, how this will have its effect on the other stocks and, and the other indices. So for now, I would say um, looking at this, um, looking at this picture, yes, we found resistance near this downside line and near this 35,662 mark which I've mentioned before um, I talked about that guys and I said that in order for me to go for some get a little bit more comfortable with higher levels I need to see a nice clear break above this area um, well in a way um, we we approached that area we did get a very fractional push above that hurdle but as, as I said before we didn't get um, a nice close above that so um, if we take a look at the cash index right now we'll see that the price is trading at around 35,570 marks so well basically we are somewhere around here basically we're just fractionally above this downside line but still below this barrier so I'm being, being very careful here guys because again I'm really curious how this to how today's trading is gonna go through um, we might see maybe a bit of weakness something like that maybe a bit of correction however if it pops above this and stays above this 35,662 mark I will uh, slowly uh, continue aiming higher similar story with the S&P um, 500 the only problem here is that it clearly stayed below this downside line and uh, this of course doesn't really paint that positive picture and for example if we take a look at the cash index we'll see that the price is trading at around 4530 zone so yeah basically declined quite decently and of course mainly uh, due to that negativity coming in you know after the Facebook uh, kind of earnings meta platforms excuse me uh, uh, earnings so yeah also quite interesting to see what's gonna happen here 
if we can break this downside line for now i would say if as long as it stays maybe somewhere in this territory and maybe above the these emas these 21 day and the 100 day emas but below this downside line i will remain a little bit on the neutral side um because again there is still potential for this one to break higher but again um let's like i said let's take everything with a pinch of salt and uh, uh if it starts falling below these emas the 21 day EMA, the 100 day EMA. Now that's where we might consider maybe a bit of a, a retracement here, maybe even back towards this 200 day EMA. However, we're not going to rush into anything. We're just going to wait and see. We're going to play a bit, a, a bit of a waiting game here. Uh, DXY, the dollar index. So guys, um, yep, drifted lower. And to be honest, everything's kind of in line here. Then I've already talked a lot about DXY and and to be honest the same uh, scenario remains valid I mean because we we fell below some of these levels that I talked about this 96.67 I spoke about that in the beginning of this uh, of the week and on Friday as well so yeah I mean to be honest not much to say here we're drifting nicely lower and we're trading currently below that 21 day EMA if we stay below it then yeah we'll continue aiming um, aiming lower towards this upside support line taken from the low of the 25th of May of uh, 2021 now jumping into gold now talk about a roller coaster right here I mean um, on a daily chart it's not really kind of let's say visible as much but let's say on a shorter time frame you'll see that yeah it's a bit of a choppy uh, I mean the, you, you'll see that choppiness here um, and uh, yeah it drifted lower drifted back yesterday when I was talking about this when we were uh, sitting below that 208 EMA I said that if it continues to trade below that then yeah we could go lower um, it and you can see it did not it just pushed back above the EMA here and uh, traveled back above this 1805 zone so uh, we're currently sitting just bang on in that area yesterday we closed above that so in a way I would say I'm kind of leaning a little bit more towards the upside um, and again uh, it's gonna be quite interesting to see because maybe this is an indication that you know Mm, that the market isn't really, you know, the equity market is not really feeling great. So, which means that gold might, you know, gain uh, kind of attention, gain uh, attention, attention from the buyers, and we could see this one pushing higher. So, keep your eyes on the equity world today, guys. I mean, and yeah, I mean, this is how we could play out this uh, gold trade. And uh, my next target will be the 21-day EMA from the short-term perspective, which is roughly around that 1812 zone. If that gets clear, then I'll go for that 1830 area. Um, US oil, which is WTI oil. So we pushed back down. So, of course, initially, and this is what I kept saying to you guys. I mean, we this is a difficult one. I mean, look, I, I kept on saying that as long as we stay above this uh, this upper side of the uh, rising channel, then there is a good chance for this one to move higher. However, I'm going to take a cautiously bullish approach in here because we're still very close to it. And well, I mean, yeah, we, we're we're seeing, yeah, we saw yesterday a good push higher, but yep, everything kind of, uh, you know, kind of fell over here. And uh, yeah, uh, like I said, the weakness came in in the equity world and well I mean this kind of brought oil a little bit lower so we're now back below this uh, upside upper side of the uh, rising channel can we go lower here I would say again the same story now if we stay below this uh, upper side of the rising channel then well I mean we could um, we could continue um, we could continue kind of maybe aiming or uh, sorry not continue the word continue is not is not right here uh, we could just aim lower um, the only thing is that as I mentioned before for me right now the, all this area right here is not really ideal I will um, don't be get me wrong I will I will readjust just a few lines here later on um, depending on how all this is going to play out I just lifted my upper side here a little bit just to kind of have it a nice touch with this one with this high the 19th of January so that's yeah we can see that we're back kind of inside this pattern so um, that's why we need to be very careful here guys and uh, I would say even let's say for the downside if you're looking for maybe a larger correction to the downside then of course I would need to see maybe a drop somewhere below this highlighted territory which is roughly around that 85 zone something like that um, and and uh, then yeah maybe a drop below that 21 day EMA could do the trick for a few more buyers oh, sorry more, more sellers um, however we need to get to that point first um, and another thing again because it's very close to the upper side here I mean I need to 
to see this one establishing a better, like more clear direction here. I mean, it's, it's just kind of oscillating around that upper side of the rising channel. So for me, that's not ideal. I mean, it's not really, it's, yeah, it seems that a lot of traders are undecided what to do further with this. So that's why we'll just wait for now um, because it's way too tricky. I mean, it could still pop higher, but at the same time, you know, it has already moved quite nicely to the upside in the short period of time. Maybe a bit of a retracement could be possible as well. However, we don't really have that signal yet. So that's why we're just observing the price action. Um, Ethereum, very quickly on that one. And uh, yeah, a uh, nice little correction correction to the downside. We're uh, we're stuck here above this upside line team from the low the 21st, uh, 4th of January. So in other words, so to be honest, we pushed higher. We got held by this 21-day EMA, which provided, yeah, fantastic resistance. And, uh, yeah, we drifted back down. However, we're still above this upside line. So um, if you want a more complicated uh, situation, well, there we go. You know, that's, you know, or actually, sorry, no, the more complicated situation is in oil. Uh, Ethereum is just kind of, uh, yeah, it's it's stuck here. It's not really attractive right now. If it breaks this upside line, then, yeah, we, we could maybe consider a bit of a move to the downside. Um, but... Uh, in a way, for now, there is still hope that, you know, this could rebound from this upside line and push higher. However, for me to consider the upside, I need to see a break of this downside line first, which is taken from the high of the 1st of December. Now, jumping into a few pairs, AUD CAD, guys. Um, right. So yesterday we had a push higher. Uh, we moved above that 21 day EMA. So that was great. We moved higher. We reached that 0 0.1972 level that I talked about previously, uh, which was great as well. But as you can see, we failed not only to stay above that hurdle, but also above, uh, we failed to stay above the 21 day EMA and we drifted back down. However, that doesn't mean that we're now getting very negative and everything. No, because um, again, if oil suddenly starts declining, um, then we well, maybe we could see AUD CAD actually, um, you know, popping higher here and uh, moving nicely to the upside. However, I'm still going to stick to the same 0 0.1972 level, but... Um yeah, um, I'm going to be very careful here for now, um, I would say. And uh, if um, if we do pop above this 21-day EMA, then yes, this could lead to some higher levels. But as I said, I'll get a little bit more comfortable with that um, only on a break of this barrier first. And in a way, um, let's see how all this is going to play out. Because again, uh, at the moment, I'm looking at the, like I said, the market. And, and AD CAD sometimes can be a good indicator of, you know, what could happen with the market, especially with the equity world and oil. So at the moment, we have mm, a bit of risk off, uh, a bit of kind of uh, fear kicking in into the uh, cash industry or equity world. Um, I mean, maybe that could be temporary. Um, if that's temporary, then, well, uh, we could see, um, yeah, we could see this one uh, dropping and uh, to the we could see AUD kind of you know reacting to that and uh, let's say mm, we could see the you know the, if the equity world continues to rally we could see AUD kind of you know push is getting a little bit stronger um, and if let's say oil stays at the same level or even drifts a little bit lower that could be a perfect combination for this pair to move nicely to the upside um, for the downside uh, from the technical side for example on this one I would prefer to wait for a drop below this somewhere below this 0 0.8980 zone and then yeah we could go for lower levels now USD JPY very quickly on this um, so um, yesterday I talked about this one and I said that if it stays above this 21 day EMA then there's maybe a bit of hope here for the buyers however I would still prefer to wait for a push above this 11507 zone in order to go for some higher levels but uh, instead yeah we dropped below that 21 day EMA and uh, yeah for now I'm going to be leaning a little bit toward, towards the downside if if um, the pair stays below uh, below this um, below this downside line right here um, and then yeah we uh, oh sorry downside line uh, it, 21 day EMA there we go sorry I mean I have a visual mind um, kind of visually I'm keeping this downside or in the, my mind I'm keeping this downside line here for now I mean uh, I just don't want to kind of overcomplicate things here on the chart but yeah um, so if it stays below this 21 day EMA, then yeah, we'll continue aiming to the downside towards that 100 day EMA shown as the green line here or this 113.48 level. Uh, now, US dollar against Russian ruble. Now, this is something that's quite interesting. I do like to look at these exotic pairs sometimes. Um, and uh, well, just because they're quite technical. Um, 
looking at this picture, you can see a clear or nice rising channel. And initially, we were around here, uh, you know, uh, when the things were kind of escalating uh, in on the geopolitical arena. But now that everything's calm, everything is getting calmer, um, and we're seeing, yep, a nice decline here. Uh, from these highs and uh, yep we're now resting near this um, lower side of the rising channel so um, this is what I mentioned uh, I've, I've drawn here before basically if this continues to hold we might see a nice rebound here and a push higher but if you're looking for um, some maybe more reassurance then maybe you could keep an eye on the 77.33 level just in case so a nice pop above it may open the door to its higher levels now I'm not saying that we could go all the way back here to this 80.40 zone mm, but um, because again if this let's say does rebound and does push higher yes we could go for the upside but you know it eventually it might kind of end up being something like this so we might see maybe uh, you know another peak here a lower high um, then we could draw this nice trend line so it's kind of uh, the same you know the same and the same over and over again but um, let's uh, let's not overcomplicate our lives yet um, first let's see if we actually do get that rebound if we don't get that rebound now that's where yes we could see uh, a move lower we could see uh, you know a, a drop and let me just actually grab one of these lines so if we drop somewhere below this 75.55 territory right here then yeah that could open the door towards some lower levels and uh, yeah that would be quite interesting to watch where it could go further um, but we'll get to that point and uh, if it do, does drop below the lower side of the uh, uh, rising channel here and below the 75.55 zone then my next target is around these EMAs the 100 and the 200 EMAs uh, GBPNZD very quickly on that one now talk about a pair which it does like to trend I mean GBPNZD is one of those that you know if it trends it trends and with minimal correction to the let's say you know to the downside or the upside depending on the situation of course so here um, you can see this pair I mean yeah it ha it's having a wonderful rally and if we compare it to uh, what we had here previously then well since around the beginning of November this is just non-stop to the upside and to be honest again as long as it stays above this upside line and yeah this could continue aiming kind of you know going higher and higher um, at the moment I'm not really seeing clear indication for a uh, reversal maybe a larger reversal and for me that would be maybe a, at least a break of the subside line and a drop below the 21 day EMA because well look at this I mean we're quite steep here um, so if you're trying to short this guys um, I should re recommend to stay a little bit careful, a little bit cautious, because again, looking at this picture, I mean, maybe just maybe mm, this if it clears up these recent, you know, this this obstacle is somewhere around that 2.05 territory. If it clears that again, then well, we could slowly, of course, aim for something higher here, like the 2.10 zone. Um, in between there, we have another good obstacle somewhere around here near the 2.0713, something like that um, so yeah a bunch of levels here you can see that could be tested so you know you can choose whatever you're comfortable with however for me let's say from for now from the you know from this perspective I mean I'm looking at this 2.05 territory I mean it's yeah it's providing strong resistance however the fact that it's kind of getting you know it's the the pair is flirting with that area that kind of concerns me and uh, it may I mean that maybe eventually this will get a nice pop here now Keep your eyes on the um, keep your eyes on the uh, the news today. We do have quite an eventful day today, guys. Um, so today's yeah Thursday. So according to the economic calendar, first of all we'll have the um, oh we already had the composite and service PMIs numbers. So which uh, came out um, oh no sorry we did not have it yet. No sorry I do apologize. We we did not have that yet. Um, the yeah we are expecting the uh, composite and services PMI numbers for January from UK and the same story for. The, e, the Eurozone, then the most important will be around, um, let me just um, bear with me one moment, guys, um, just a second, let me just adjust this very quickly. Um, yeah, so, um, 
the next, of course, the next, um, the next news is the, um, the you know, the BOE inflation report, and together with the interest rate decision, guys. So the expectation currently is for an increase. So that's going to be quite interesting to see. Um, if we don't get an increase. Um, expected increase then well because it, it, the the previous number uh, the, the current number is at 0. Point, plus 0. 0.25 percent the expectation is for a you know uh, another uh, 0. 0.25 uh, another 25 basis points increase basically so um, if that doesn't happen then we might we might see uh, maybe the pair the pair here maybe falling off the cliff and maybe correcting nicely to the downside however if it happens then we might see a little push higher but um, yeah, I mean, given that it's already maybe priced in, so that's why we might not see a huge spike. Again, let's not overcome. Let's you know we don't have the crystal ball. I mean, maybe we'll react. You know, the opposite of what I was just saying. So, so let's wait. Um, I would. I always suggest wait uh, for the news first and then do something about it because don't try to predict. You know, because otherwise, um, well, first of all, you might you know it might not work in your favor and uh, another thing sometimes the spreads increase quite significantly so um so yeah that's you know be very careful on that front um now jumping into euro jpy and of course the euro with everything what relates to the euro today is also going to be monitored because we have the um the ecb interest rate decision that one doesn't expect to have a, an increase yet so um, yeah, but the most important, of course, will be the, the press conference from Christine Lagarde uh, 45 minutes after the interest rate decision. So yeah, um, that's going to be quite interesting. That's when we, this is what we're going to be watching. Again, for now, from the technical side, we're keeping an eye on the Euro JPY because it's currently, um, yeah, it's trading below these, this, this area of resistance. I need to see that pop somewhere above this 129.65 level in order to go for some higher levels. For the downside, pretty straightforward, I need to break of this upside line here and taken from the low of the 6th of December and then yeah we could maybe consider maybe a bit of a move to the downside euro USD guys very quickly on this one as I said to you yesterday, um, don't expect maybe you know big movements uh, like yesterday and uh, during yesterday's trades. And we did, yeah, we did get a push higher, but that was quite normal. The main focus will be today, um, and let's see if we can break this downside line again. If we can, uh, then yeah, more buyers could join in. And probably this is where the time where I need to adjust a few levels here, and I'll keep an eye on the yesterday's high uh, to simplify my life here a little bit. If we do pop above yesterday's high, then yeah, I'll go for some higher levels i need to get rid of this no longer needed uh, let's clear up the chart here a little bit and my next target will be um, this one right here the highest point of january near the 1.1483 zone right here and then we will take it from there guys uh, for the downside now um this is where i need to adjust a few levels here uh, i'll remove this uh, for the downside i will start looking at lower levels if we drop below this 1.1235 territory right here and then i'll aim for the lowest point of january so guys, uh, that's it for the session. I really hope you found it useful, guys, and thank you very much for watching this recorded session. Um, we'll get back to live videos next week. So yeah, um, thank you very much for joining in. I really appreciate your time, guys. I really do. So stay safe today. Have your stop losses in place for sure. Um, don't overtrade. Um, if you see if you see that it's let's say it's not working, it's not going your way, guys. Just leave it for the next day. Honestly, believe me, it will you know it'll help you help you clear up your mind, reevaluate things because. If you think that you're missing out an opportunity, well, guess what? The next day will for sure provide you an opportunity. Maybe not in the same instrument, but somewhere else for sure. So, um, guys, thank you very much, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.